here we are then with uh, Destiny in Rock Art Greece, where we, we meet our destiny. <laughs> <laughs> At least online. Are you, are you ready to face your fate? <laughs> um, destiny uh, is a member of uh, Pirate Queen. Pirate Queen. Uh, Pirate Queen is releasing uh, the album Ghosts. Uh, in the 3rd of uh, May. So, we are here to talk about this uh, debut album. And Destiny, whose idea was it to form Pirate Queen? Well, I've always wanted to form an all-female metal band. And uh, I thought it was about time that I put some action into that. Uh, we've known each other since like 500 years ago. We met there in the island of Lixion. But here in the mainland, uh, we had to re-meet because we didn't uh, land in the same spots in the in the real world. So yeah, it's uh, I've always been crazy about power metal. Uh, we all uh, love power metal in Paraquin. So it was about time that we chose the perfect lineup for, for this project. And it being a conceptual uh, kind of deal, it was very important for um, for us to know what we were doing and what we would like to do and how we were going to play with the genres of music that we were um, going to use for, for the stories that we are about to tell. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we can say uh, it was always on top of my head but i think everybody in the band had always dreamt and thought about creating this type of project so i guess it might be a, a general idea of everybody mm -hmm. uh, have you played in other bands before joining uh, pirate queen yeah uh we all play in other bands uh our drummer ra uh raindrop oceanos is a mercenary for a uh, hundred million bands she's a really great drummer and she plays in many other bands, like for example, Negara. They are actually playing in Eurovision this year. So representing San Marino and she's a drummer. The thing is right now she cannot make it to that specific festival because uh, she has another deal with another person, sadly. Uh, I mean, good for her, but at the same time it's sad that she cannot make it to Eurovision. Uh, our, our other guitarist, uh, our little ghost, she plays in a thrash metal band called Razors. And uh, Luna, she plays in a couple bands, one of them being Brother Still With I, which is a metalcore type of um, band. And our singer, Her Majesty, she plays in a, in a power metal band called Tales of Time. As for myself, I am the lead guitarist and composer for another conceptual project called Norvold, which is also very symphonic metal uh, gothic power type of deal. It really depends on the story that we are telling. Um, how did you end up using this pirate image? Were you looking for something that hasn't been done before in a large scale? Or were you just uh, wanted to become pirates and play? <laughs> <laughs> well, I really think the image of the pirate is very closely related to freedom. And metal, I always relate that type of music also to freedom. It's like a type of music that you don't need actual, you don't, you don't have to, to get a, an academic background to play metal. So if you are a 14 year old who want to play a, a metal concert, you just have to buy a guitar, learn a couple of riffs, book the venue and then play. So it's all about the freedom of not caring a lot about uh, what uh, other people will think of you. And um, I think pirates are very related to that idea because it's all about the freedom, sailing the seas without mm, caring about what others would think. And if you don't like what we're doing, then don't listen to it or don't come with us in our boat, right? So um, there's a there's a, actually a, a very beautiful poem here in, in our mainland uh, uh, official uh, place of birth, uh, which is Spain that is called uh, La Canción del Pirata, which translates roughly to the song of the pirate. And it tells this story about this captain who values freedom over any other thing in the world. 
So uh, yeah, the ideas of pirates, freedom, and heavy metal, I think it merges together like really, really well. And, and the aesthetic is also really cool. So that is really eye-catching. And um, the fact of having this aesthetic, because lately, if you think of it, a lot of bands use uh, costumes or they dress as a specific thing. Like for example, Windrose, they dress as dwarves, Aelstom, they dress as pirates. So there's a lot of glory, glory hammer, they dress with full armor. So there's a lot of themes going on in the metal uh, stages lately. And I think people are enjoying this kind of things more and more. So yeah, we thought that it would be like really cool to mix all of that and then make it a little step further in matters of uh, getting to role play a little bit, um, use a LARP um, replicas for us to, to do something on stage and make it more, more than only just a show. So yeah, all the these ideas combined is the the answer to to that question. Yeah, I see. I see that you have a uh, very specific uh, clothing. Uh, you have uh, the guitar is like an axe, for example. It's not only the the stage clothing; it's also the instruments and everything uh, surrounding it. It's very uh, well prepared, I would say. <laughs> Thank uh, you. So you you combine heavy metal, pirates, and role playing games. Can you explain what happens in your live shows where you say that you have live action role playing games? Well, we want we are, we are still working on the live show because we really want to study a little bit the people that will go there because there's nothing worse than trying to play games with the audience and then the people not participating in that. So. We we're still studying how to do it, but we are working closely with Epic Armory, which is a, a Danish um, company that crafts all the hats and weapons and, and costumes and everything. So what we would like to do is to incorporate not only the costumes, but also some kind of game with the audience, let it be uh, uh, maybe a treasure hunt, let it be large, like a real soft combat fights. It really depends on how the people will be behaving in in the concert itself. Yeah. But we would love to make Pirate Queen more of an experience rather than only a band that plays live and that's it. Because lately with the, with the awesome recordings that mm, they are getting uh, from live shows, uh, a lot of people can enjoy the live music from home it's of course it's not the same thing and you don't feel the music the same way but there's always something going on in concerts like you get a bad spot and then you cannot hear properly or maybe uh you have to be uh very in the back because you got there late or something so we like to um, step up the game a little bit and make it more an experience rather than just a concert mm -hmm without, of course, uh, forgetting about the musical aspects. Um, I, I see your sign and it says, Pirate Queen since 1523, win sin min. Can you elaborate on this? What does it mean? Yeah, we we all know each other from the island of Lixion, which is our real um, place of birth. Uh, that is a floating island in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. We all know each other there and we all come from royal pirate families and uh, we formed the band back 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that now we had to re-meet each other in the mainland, the real world, to well, to catch up and to recreate the band, but here in Europe. That is why we we put that sign on yeah, 1,500. Yeah. Um... Your album has eight songs, however, in fact, it literally has literally has five songs, as it has ghosts in three different versions and the short instrumental Siren Steers. Uh, why didn't you try to, to write a couple of more songs and then release your, the album? That is actually a really great question, but we really wanted to offer uh, something like as soon as possible. It's not that we decided to rush things over, 
but you know for printing albums we want to offer something extra that wouldn't be only the singles posted on on youtube or or amazon or, or spotify or whatever we are uh, still working on some songs that will be played live and that we will record at some point later but we really wanted to offer like an ep something short uh, easy to listen to because in the end uh, you know, lately with uh, with all these algorithm, the Spotify and this type of streaming platforms, it's really easy for people to jump from one song to another. And I don't think people listen to um, a whole album uh, straight anymore. Like they prefer to listen to different artists instead of analyzing and listen to one album over and over. And the way that we consume music has changed a lot since uh, like the last 10 years. So I wanted to do something short as a presentation to say, okay, we're here. This is what we do. And we don't want to, um, to make the listener listen to maybe 10 or, or 12 songs or even eight songs, because most people will probably never listen to the whole album in one, in one spot. So we wanted to release singles and then to make it like an album in a way that it would be easy to listen. And if you want, Want to check it out a little bit more? Maybe you have all the different versions of the the second single, which is Ghosts. But yeah, we are, we are working on more songs, of course. Um, have you listened to uh, other bands with pirate-like themes, like Hailstorm, like Running Wild? Yeah, I I know Hailstorm. Um, what, what what do you think? What what do you think that you can do differently? Well, it's not a matter of uh, what we can do different i mean i don't think there's one reference for pirates and that's it like it has been done before and then you kind of do it because another person has done it like if we did things like that we would probably for example never eat the same food uh two days two different things so um it's not that we want to copy or that we want to be like extremely different from any other band that has done the pirate theme before I, I really don't think that makes any sense. It, it is true that in met, in the metal scene, it's very common to see, oh, that one has copied the other, but I don't think it's, I don't think like that at all. We wanted to, to take the topic of pirates because it's really easy to make it into fantasy somehow. Like you have like the real pirates that have existed and then you have fantasy pirates and you can make a lot of adventure songs and you can create a lot of stories from this uh, this topic. And what we wanted to do is that now uh, we wanted to do power metal, but we really wanted to do something more. Like it really depends on the song. We would like to to change maybe the, the type of riffs, the type of solos, the type of melody, or the type of, of orchestra or orchestrations that, that are playing behind, behind the band. And for that to be easy to happen, it was very, very easy to take a topic, uh, like a, a conceptual topic like pirates and make it into music. For instance, if we are mm, singing about um, invoking the ghosts of the past, the song is going to be really different from looking for El Dorado at some point. And that's something that the fantasy theme and in this case, Pirates allows us to do with the music without people thinking this is not the same style or the same genre that it promised to be at the beginning with the first song that I listened to. Uh, which female artists do you consider as influences or idols? A lot of them. Um, actually, I, I really don't like to see uh, people as, okay, this is a female inspiration or a male inspiration. I only like to to see them yeah, as influences yeah. and that's it but if we had to talk about mm, female players and feminism into into the scene i would say that john jett has been one of the most important female musicians that have stepped on the rock and roll stage and she has been such an inspiration because she didn't care about anything that anybody said and she made it really big. And I really like her voice. And I really like, um, she, she was a big inspiration for me to start playing guitar. But then if, if we have to think about 
amazing and incredible musicians. I would say Floor Johnson is one of my favorite singers ever. Uh, Tardia Turunen got me a lot into metal when I was a kid. Um, Alisa Reed, she's also a great singer. Alisa White Blues, um, because she's also one of the first who, who was growing and uh, as a like as a big uh, female character into uh, fronting uh, an all man band, um, uh, and or or Angela Gosu before her. So it it was like very very shocking for people for the fans to to see, um, to see those specific uh, characters rolling. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, those are a few of them. Yeah, yeah. These these are like pioneers. I mean, uh, there's no reason to discriminate between the the genders of uh, uh, a female and male. Uh, however, uh, from the time that you are an all female band. Um, I think that there are, there are a few female artists that have stepped up and uh, showed the world that there should be no discrimination between uh, uh, sexes and uh, uh, female and male and all that stuff. And those that you mentioned are amongst them, of course. Uh, yeah. and, and, and heavy metal and hard rock is a very different, a very, a very difficult uh, genre of music. Uh, that uh, people, especially in the past, could not accept a woman easily. Now things, I think, hopefully, have changed yeah. a lot. <laughs> have changed a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it has evolved a lot. There's still a lot of work to do. Yeah. I would consider the, do the the work would be done when there will be no questions asked if you have an all-female band. Like, wh yeah. when nobody will say an all-female band because yeah. nobody cares, that would be the spot to say okay we 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 did it <laughs> but i think but i think that some more years must pass before we we stop dealing with that with that thing however i think we 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 are uh in a path that things show that are changing yeah totally 100% um which would be the the ultimate goal for a newcomer like pirate queen well, there are a lot of them. Right now, like in the closest future, I would say the album release, touring for that album, at least Europe, and then start working on the second album. But, and play festivals, of course, summer festivals, like, I don't know, uh, Legend of Rock, for example, or Wacken, or Hellfest. I don't think that is going to happen for this year, but maybe the next one, uh, I don't know. It really depends on the work that the management does, but we trust them a lot. I think for Pirate Queen, uh, like in the long term, we would like to create some kind of, of collective of people. Like not only do music and then the, and in a couple of years do another album and then do more touring and then do more festivals and, and keep going like that forever and ever, which is part of the plan, of course. But we would like to form like a family of people who will enjoy the music and who will play the games that we offer in our shows, like for example, we would like to 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 create this kind of uh, of mini games with the people, in which if you get something from each one of us, then you can get to uh, sign our super book, and then uh, we we will give you something in exchange. So like, be uh, create like a big family, or maybe like a long term going uh, role play game. It really depends on the um, on how the things evolve. But we would love to to create more things than just uh, music, and and yeah, like pretty much. Um, let's see how things go, and then we will probably um, change our minds depending on on the direction that that our ship uh, takes us to. But yeah, in general, I think to create a very big family that goes into the um, the pirate theme and really goes hardcore into it. If. Last question, if you were to join a band or have somebody as a guest in your album, who would it be? If I had to join another band, like to be a guest to perform? Or either guest or a more permanent member. Or have okay. somebody as a guest in your album, just pick one. Oh, like pick one or the other? Yeah, you can answer both, but to make it easier for you, uh, oh you, no, I, I don't. Can... I don't mind answering both. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. if I had to join a band, I think I would be a dream come true. 
for my little uh, teenager inside to be part of Nightwish because it was the first band that I, that got me a lot into into metal. And if I had to get somebody to be part, I mean, if it was part of Pirate Queen, it would make sense if any of the ASO members would join and hop in in our boat. <laughs> if it was for another project, maybe I would love to have Alisa White Blues to sing a song that I would compose or something. So it, it really depends on the project. Yeah, 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 of course. But a, but a, a joint tour with Hellstorm would be fantastic. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Full of rum and tequila. I think you have yeah, your own. Be... You have your own. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's gin. It's yeah, gin. we are working with with Stickim Jim. They are yeah. working on a on a specific Paraguayan gin, and yeah. that's that's super cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's it's something totally different. You know, we've yeah. seen beers, we've seen whiskeys, we've seen vodkas. But no gin. Yeah, well, now now you do. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yes, of course. Uh... 